I'm Catherine Awesome here live from the floor of the NYC with Jim Kramer. Jim, what's on top of your mind this well, morning? You know, I'm Jimmy Chill. There was someone this morning who was saying, as soon as I heard that Kramer said uh, that you should be careful in quicksand, I bought. And Jimmy Chill um, just says, okay, fine, I bought you. Uh, this is not, I mean, what I was most, we sold stuff yesterday for action alerts. Now, why do we do that? Because if you step away and you know the way the market works, you get a rally when nothing bad happens. Uh, and then you realize, and well, all I'm doing is using the Ben Stoto timeline of what happened with Ebola when you finally had someone who died in America, which could happen. You bottomed a week later. Uh, I've been talking to Len Schleifer of Regeneron. They, they conquered Ebola. They're incredibly confident they're going to conquer this. I think it will be conquered. I think that one of the things that China's doing is they're, um, you know, China's got, I, mean, I just, my stepson was just over there and got hurt. Um, you have a Shanghai hospital, deals with 500,000 people. There's three of them, 1.5 million people. And you see, you wonder how China could have so many problems. Well, think about that uh, number. Um, but you don't have, I'm developing a drug and you, it isn't like you have like a lot of like phase one, phase two. I mean, it's taken me uh, and my doctor six months to get to where we can uh, begin a trial. Uh, in China, they're going to so-called fast track. So top of mind is uh, not a great time to buy. Um, I said that. I said we get quicksand. Uh, when I see cocky people come in, there were a lot of cocky people this morning. Uh, Jimmy Chill says, oh, I hope nobody gets hurt. The old Jimmy, of course, just said, screw them. I'm not, I'm not that. I'm Jimmy Chill. Uh, but that's my line is uh, I do think that, that if you're not concerned about uh, planes coming here filled with people who may have it, then I think that you're uh, being oblivious, even as I ultimately think they will conquer it. Now, I know that you've done some work that puts um, this in perspective. So I hope you share that right now with our viewers. Yeah, so let's talk about the flu in re re and the coronavirus. So coronavirus right now, we've got about 6,000 cases worldwide, most of them in China. We've had about 100, over 125 deaths. The flu this year, we in have America. had the in flu America. in America, specifically in America, according to the CDC, we have 15 million cases of the flu in the US. We've had 8,200 deaths this season and about 140,000 people are hospitalized from the flu. Now compare that to the coronavirus, we've got about 120, I think the last tally was 128 people um, who have passed away from this disease, and we've got 6,000 people total who have okay. this disease. All right, so let's say the Chinese uh, PRC are just a wholesale bunch of liars. Multiply it by five, as bad as the US? I mean, think about the populations. Uh, China has about 1.4 billion people. Mm -hmm. The U.S. has about 30, 3, 3 mil, 300 million and 29 people. Okay. Million. Well, I mean, you know, with that, what uh, you know, my conclusion is uh, that it's going to get worse uh, because we don't, you know, we got an incubation period of two weeks. I've heard a huge number of experts, and it, it's a variety of different uh, conclusions because the Chinese are historically not transparent, and they're proving to be not transparent. I mean, they're doing some things right. Uh, my old friend Greg Reyes, uh, who is a good fo uh, good follow on Twitter, was talking about how the Chinese actually have been reckless. And I think they were very reckless at the beginning because I think they tried to hide it because uh, China is not a strong country. It's a dictatorship, and I think that if you do a bad job as the mayor of, uh, of Wuhan, there's certainly a chance that you'll be executed because the Chinese don't deal with things the way we do. Uh, I, I do think that it's much worse, but even if it's much worse, I think that the way that I'm describing it is we're going to have to live with it, and, uh, and that's what those numbers tell me. Uh, I got my flu shot yesterday. I've been in a version of the flu shot because I had friends who got the flu shot and then got the flu. That's how I work. Yeah, and I you know, woke up just feeling horrible. Uh, and sniffles, terrible headache, and you know I hadn't, you know, well, it happened. I went to dinner. I had a cocktail. Uh, so it's pretty clear that that's the vaccine. But the reason why you want the vaccine is because uh, if you do get the flu now, it's more than likely that you have corona. And obviously, you just want to be more cautious. You want to keep your hands from your face. Uh, that's hard because I read a piece yesterday. You, you touch your face about 2,000 times. Purell is not necessarily a, a, a solution. Uh, masks are really so that other so that you don't give it to others, which is important. 
Uh, and I did notice that in my neighborhood, in the Lower East Side of Manhattan, a lot of people have popped up wearing masks. Well, you know, look, it's it does you know it's one of those uh, can't hurt, and uh, you can't get a mask on Amazon until Feb 10, uh, which I think is interesting. Uh, 3M makes the most effective mask, but 3M is uh, such a mess; it's not helping. Dow Chemical makes the material, uh, but Dow doesn't. Dow's talking about a trough in chemicals, so I think you put us in perspective. Uh, I think that we're certainly going to hit that. Um, do we want 8,200 people to die? Of course not. Do we think that the number of people who have this, who have died, let's put it this way, uh, when you look at the ratio of the number of people who have died in that country, including Corona, and if you believe their numbers, versus here, they're much safer than being here. And no one wants to say that because then what happens is, is that you will then be, uh, let's say, sliced in YouTube as saying that it wasn't bad. And I'm not saying that, okay? And you can slice it any way you want. But what matters is, is that we need perspective. And the perspective right now is, is that if it was five times worse, it's still better than what we have in the US. It's, by the way, uh, the influenza, I've heard of the Spanish flu. A lot of people talk about the Spanish flu, uh, where you had 50 to 70 million people die. Remember, the Spanish flu, uh, incubation period a day, which means you die. Okay, so you get incubated, you know, you incubate, you get sick, and then you die. Uh, people are talking about how bad the incubation period is. It's two weeks here, you don't know if you have it. Absolutely. So it, it's a shame that there, that we have people coming from Wuhan here. Uh, well, coming from China, if you can, a lot of people left Wuhan for the uh, lunar. That, that shouldn't, we shouldn't do that. We, the fewer people from China, the better in our country. I'm be adamant about that. I think the government is wrong in not shutting it down. Uh, so you're going to have it here. Remember, Ebola, death, one week later, bottom. And that's what I've been concerned about. Uh, and uh, the good people who just want to buy, 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 uh, they should do a little more work. There's plenty of stocks that work, but we were sellers yesterday, not buyers. Why? Because we have to use a, um, a timeline based on what we had on Ebola. All we have is that. We just have to look at history. It could be very wrong. Maybe this thing is just solved by when uh, Schleifer tomorrow. They, and I say that because Regeneron solved Ebola. And, and, and so that could happen and I'm gonna be dead wrong and it turned out to be the greatest opportunity to buy in the history of the Western world. But you know, I'm stuck with history. You said something that sparked my curiosity and that's if the Chinese government is lying to us, if that's true, should we see a more of a market reaction? Well, I mean, again, you know, I just think that China is clearly lying to us about the, you know, they don't look, Wuhan, you know, they're, they're building these hospitals. You know, why are they building the hospitals? Because well, they have demand. Now, it's interesting, like I heard someone say, the Chinese go to a hospital more than we do. Um, you know, we'll go to a doctor, we won't necessarily go to the hospital. Um, China is a much less sanitary country. Hey, listen, I've heard people say that the reason why they gave in, and they gave in, you know, that Matt Horwein and I have been going over, he's my writing partner, over and over and over uh, the trade deal, 100 pages and how good it is, but maybe they gave in because the, the regime is under a severe attack by this, by this virus. We don't know. Um, it goes from either being not as bad as the United States and just a matter of fact bad flu, to a uh, collapsing regime and uh, you know anything's possible now if you snip it oh kramer says the regime's collapsing again that's stupid i'm mindful of this because uh, i have said things in my career that were misinterpreted and i'm just presenting a range of things uh and why we did some selling uh because the day before we did buying see when it was down big we bought uh, but when it was up really big, we trimmed so that we ended up with not putting new money to work. It's, it, it, it's called investing. It, it's, it gets done. Jimmy, chill. Jim, let's, talk, let's switch our um, attention to earnings. And I want to first start with Boeing, which reported earnings that came in below forecasts. But one thing well, that... That was good. That was good because some of the forecast was made by a Dennis Mullenberg. Now, I want to defend Dennis for a moment. Okay, um, what really happened here is, is that uh, Calhoun and Greg Smith have gotten together, Greg Smith is CFO who was trade shooter the whole time, and said, look, you know, we can't overpromise anymore. It's out of our hands. Uh, the issue is safety, that's all they care about. Um, I'm not saying the previous regime only cared about that. I think they also cared about marketing. 
Um, the safety issue is keeping Boeing stuck. Like the Boeing analysis was incredibly transparent. Boeing itself can keep the Dow up today just because it, it was such good uh, conference, good guys. Uh, Calhoun is not necessarily, I know he was on the board, so people uh, suspect him. I, there wasn't anything I felt was suspicious with him. Uh, I do think that I feel better about Boeing. Uh, I've always been in communication with a lot of people with Boeing who were, uh, felt that what they did was horrible and that they have to make it up over time. And um, would I buy Boeing? Probably. So the transparency? I would buy GE, probably. These were very good. You know, would I buy McDonald's? Up four? No. Would I buy 3M? No. But I think GE and Boeing are both okay. GE was very good. Uh, and the reason why these are okay is because they are now reporting numbers that can be apples to apples. Boeing historically has had accounting that I don't understand. It's not, not the, their fault, it's just that um, completion accounting is very hard. I remember in, in class and accounting it was very hard. They've been, always been very straight. But what they've done this time is say, it's out of our hands. It's really up to the government. Uh, and that was very welcome. Um, GE actually uses accounting, regular accounting now. When I used to talk with GE under the previous regime, they had all these different um, after-tax this or that, and they got away with it. And um, for a moment, I want to defend the previous GE management, of, uh, the uh, ML management. Okay, um, I do think that uh, I like Calhoun. I'd like to have it, uh, someone from the military come in like maybe the retired Air Force General from the uh, Air Force Academy, who just retired in December. That's my advice to them. And if they did that, I'd really feel good about it. Uh, but again, I think that Boeing is not bad. By the way, you know, it's interesting on the, um, the companies that are doing well are today, like J&J, &J, they're, uh, they're, they're working on a vaccine. Uh, remember, a vaccine here, it take a year, all right? Over there, it might take a day because they're going to trial. Regeneron over here might take a year, over there might take an hour because of what they did with Ebola. Um, they have a very different system there. Um, they are what I would describe, and it's very interesting because I've done some work with them, you know, with the company that was involved with them. They don't mind false positives. That's the thing you got to think about. Uh, they don't mind uh, triage, all right? They're trying to solve this thing and the way they're going to solve this thing is by um, testing it on humans. Now, that's what you do. That's what they're going to do. Before we go to GE, I just have one more question about Boeing, and that is, was for you personally, was it Calhoun's comments on Boeing, or was it the new management that gave you confidence well, it was Greg in the Greg Smith, company? the CFO, who has said over and over again, look, um, I know the numbers. We're fine numbers. Um, I know the backlog. Uh, backlog's unchanged. So then it's up to Calhoun to figure out a way to make it so that we'll, the pilots want to fly it. If the pilots want to fly it, then we want to go with it. I think it is going to be the safest air, uh, air you know, plane ever. Uh, and I just don't think Boeing's stock is going to go down much more because they really have a lot more cash flow, even though the number was negative. Yeah, I, I got assurance. The plane's going to fly. One day it's going to fly. Let's talk about General Electric. Now, this quarter was incredible for them. And you and I talked last quarter about the turnaround story of Larry Culp and how he didn't want to call it a turnaround story. No, but is I mean, it fair Larry, to say that now is a turnaround Larry story? Culp, let's see what he's done. Okay, so power was really bad. He's right-sized power. That's the right thing to do. Uh, Long-term care, really bad. He's going to give us a, an update, but I think the update's going to be positive. Positive meaning that, frankly, the mortality rate is uh, uh, high enough that the people, who, I, my dad had this, that the people who took the policies um, sadly are dying, but that means the end of having to have full-time care in your house. Um, Health care is fine. I, I thought that that number was a little light. It was carried by the Life Sciences, which is being sold to Danaher. I think they can get health care. I, mean, I know Larry thinks health care is good. I thought it was a little, a little suboptimal. Um, aerospace is fabulous. It's fabulous. It's like United Technologies yesterday uh, with Greg Hayes. Aerospace is fabulous. And we all, now obviously, the, if the max were to be good, you would see remarkable numbers. And one day the max is going to be good. So uh, that's a buy. 
Before we head over to our Action Alerts Plus Daily Rundown show, I do have one quick question on Apple, and that is that it missed services revenue. It missed the forecast for well, services revenue. you know revenue. what happened? I mean, everyone kind of said, you know what, we don't care if the Apple phone doesn't do well. We'll make it up with services. Well, we see now that when the phone grows, you have to raise numbers. No one ever, you know, people were, the service number was fine. And what they're doing is they're bundling things and service number was off 5%, but the, the $4 billion delta was the phone itself. And now when you get that phone, remember that's going to be a tail that's going to have services. They bought back 40% of the company at $129. Um, they're smart. They're smart in so many different ways. Uh, I use the... Uh, the new Air, you know, the AirPods, they're fantastic. The AirPods the Pro? Yeah, the Pro, the watch is great. Um, I subscribe, well, you know, Apple, you get it. Uh, you know, Tim Cook has gone to be someone, they actually have a couple of health, by the way, that I'm going to participate in some long, longitude studies. Um, Tim Cook has gone from someone who so-called didn't invent anything to someone who has reinvented the company. And I keep uh, pushing them to say, okay, if you have 98% satisfaction on a phone, and then you have Apple, you know, you have Apple Pay, and you have uh, Apple Care, and you have Apple Plus, and you have Apple this, and you have Apple that, and Apple Credit Card, can't we presume eventually that you bought a razor, and then you have to buy all these blades? They're still not willing to do that. I keep pressing them. My, All right. my predilection. Remember, today's a fulcrum day. You're going to see Boeing up, and then you're going to see a lot of stocks where people are going to take profits. And that's something that uh, we went over again for Action Alerts today. We took the profit yesterday when the profit taken was good. Uh, I'm looking at, at different things to sell, not buy. And we're going to be talking about that when we head over to our Action Alerts right. Plus Daily Jimmy Rundown Ch show. Jimmy Chill is not confident, and he's not underconfident. All right, Jim, thanks for joining us today. Guys, find us on actionalertsplus.com. I'm Catherine Ross, and we'll see you tomorrow.